Okay, so today's webinar, we're going to be doing touch drawing with character recognition. I'm going to show you guys an example I made um, that integrates a third-party OCR library uh, with Jill Studio so that we can recognize characters and get those characters as output and then uh, use them in Jill Studio. Okay, so today's webinar, we're going to be going over a couple different libraries. Um, first, I'm going to show you how Jill Studio is going to integrate um, with some other third-party libraries to actually perform that touch drawing um, and, and character recognition. So we're going to be using uh, an OCR library called Tesseract OCR. Um, it's an older library. It's been around for a while. Um, right now it's maintained by Google Code um, and it actually receives updates regularly. Also we're going to be using Leptonica which is a image processing library used by Tesseract to get those images in the correct format that it needs. So I'm going to show you how those can be integrated into Geo Studio. Um, this is also just a good example in general of how you can, how easy it is to integrate third-party libraries with Geo Studio. And so we're going to use these two libraries. These two libraries use each other, and Geo Studio is going to use them to actually uh, create a touch recognition example demo. Here you can see I have the uh, demo that I built. Um, kind of integrating this. Um, so this allow Geo Studio basically acts as the input and output to the user, so it's the um, the interface for the user. The user is able to use the touch um, features of Geo Studio to actually input that uh, that touch character, that drawn character, um, and then Geo Studio will will get that data and send it off to the third party libraries, and then receive the output and then display the output back to the user. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look um, at this application. First I'm going to show you guys the running application, how it works, and then uh, we'll kind of go check it out in Geo Studio as well. Um, so here we go. So this is a pretty simple just example of how you would use the touch integration. Uh, we actually got this idea from the automotive market. They had a, a, sh a shifter that allowed you to that had a little touch interface on the top of the shifter and allowed you to enter a character to search through a list of names or, or whatever perform search search functions. Um, so let's go ahead and start writing some characters here. You can see I can just draw a character and you see that it's detected. What it does is it will look in this box area and then try to figure out what that character is and display that character for you. And so you can either erase or enter it. If you're happy with the results, you can enter it. Um, as you can see, as when I click enter, it actually takes that character and places it into the search. And so this provides me a list of names that start with A, for example. Um, we can use erase to actually delete also in this simple application. Um, so I'm going to delete that A. And you can see that sometimes if you get a little, if you don't draw your characters very good, it won't be able to figure out what it is. So this well, still got it there. Let's, let's try a little crazy. So it tries to guess what it is. And you can see that actually Tesseract is able to process many different characters at once. So in this case, it, it actually thought there was two characters in here and it's showing me two characters. But in this demonstration, we're only going for one character. So let's go ahead and uh, look through some of these letters. You can see we already did A, B, C. So it's pretty good, it's very fast. Um, for the free and open source. There are more powerful OCR libraries out there, um, but they usually have uh, proprietary licenses. Um, a lot of them are over the internet, so you'll actually send your image data over the internet and they'll crunch that data um, with powerful servers in the background. Let's try a harder letter. So G is pretty hard. It usually does not get G. Oh, there it goes. I got it there. So you can, I can show you real quick um, how this search function would work. So let's say I wanted to find somebody's name. I put in a character, get an S. Oh well, I don't see their name in there. So uh, let's try another letter. Put an H. Oh, here they are. So then I can go and just click that, and now it's selected their name. So this is just an example of how you can use that. And you can see that the actual area for our input is kind of small. Um, the reason for this is because the requirements for this demo is that we only need to input one character. Um, it also increases the speed at which everything can happen. So for instance, Geo Studio actually reads 
the uh, image inside this box. So the larger it is, the more time it's going to take to read that that image, and also the more time it's going to take for the OCR libraries to process it. So in this case, you you want to keep that that uh, input area small to increase the speed and efficiency that your application will work. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Geo Studio and kind of take an overview of how I set this up and uh, how it works internally. Um, so here you can see I have the the application loaded in Geo Studio. Um, the actual objects in the scene are it's pretty simple. Um, there's a scribble area down here. So there's a callback on that that anytime you touch in that area it will start uh, drawing the lines and I actually also use uh, some ellipses in there to smooth out those lines um, and then there's also the list group up here so this is where it, it actually does the search when you input some characters and there's also that background frame so the actual objects in the scene are pretty simple uh, most of the complex stuff is in the code where they're actually processing the image